Hi, YouTube family. Auntie is here. It's time for the Curls and Scoop. I hope you guys had a great weekend. It's not cute not knowing. Today you're going to know, <laughs> and I know some people are going to get mad at some of the things that I bring up, but we're going to bring them up anyway. Let's give a hug. Woo-wee! How much money did the Fast and Furious make over the weekend? In the U.S., it was only $70 million. A lot of people are kind of tired of the Fast and Furious, and there's two more movies coming. But around the globe, it took in $330 million. So there are still people out there who love the story. I try to watch Fast Five. I think that kind of lost me at six because there was so much going on. But there was so much going on. I didn't know who to root for. I was sitting there like, who's the bad guy? Where did this guy come from? It, it's just maybe a little too much action for me. But what did you think of Fast and Furious 10? Like I said, two more is coming. And it took in $70 million at the box office. Now, it's number one. Will it remain number one? Because The Little Mermaid with Halle Bailey playing Ariel is hitting theaters. There are a lot of parents. There are a lot of little girls. They're excited about this. In my household, the eight-year-old got the dress. We got the book. And everything Ariel. She's ready. She's going this weekend. But there are a lot of people that are very excited. Will this be the new box office number one? Even though some reviewers have them in kind because it's live action. It's different when you do the live action than the CGI and, and all of that stuff. Melissa McCarthy plays Ursula. But The Little Mermaid hits theaters next weekend for the holiday. Jennifer Hudson. Big shakeup on her show. J. Hud, just like Sherry Shepard, has fired a lot of the producers and executive producers. She had a lot of people that worked for the Ellen Show, and I think most of them are gone. Jennifer has replaced, um, she has made her assistant a producer. She has made her publicist one of the executive producers. Sherry Shepard's show was renewed for two more seasons. Jennifer's only one. Ever since both shows came out, people were like, which one you like better? And it was always kind of mixed because no one can replace Wendy. Let's just, no one, Wendy just had a mark and a stamp of her own. But I tend to lean more towards Sherry. Jennifer has great guests. But it's just, she was just a little boring I don't know, it was just something like, there's something missing. But she had wonderful guests. She had the A-list guest. Sometimes, Sherry will have to work with what they have given her. So it's going to be interesting which show will last the longest. But both shows have made shake-up. Sherry was, she had a lot of people from Wendy's show. She got rid of most of them to bring on her own talent. So next season, for both of these shows, will be very Interesting. Megan Good, Jonathan Majors, they've been spotted in an airport holding hands. I still think this is a publicity stunt to salvage his career over the accusations of the girlfriend. We've never seen him with a sister. Now he is. Megan seems to be going along with it quite well because it's keeping her in the headlines. It keep, they're talking about it. Nobody was talking about it before. They're talking about it now. Jonathan just seems there. He does. He just, it's like he's just there. I'm like, well, can't you just smile just a little bit that y'all are happy? He just seems so serious and so intent. And to me, the photos were so planted. But you judge for yourself. Speaking of Megan, good. Did not know that the late Jim Brown was her godfather. At the start of the weekend, we got the news on Jim Brown, the pro football Hall of Famer, actor, and social activist. He died at the age of 87. He had a spectacular football career, all with the Cleveland Browns. Then he moved into acting, and then he moved into social activism, where he helped a lot of people on that social activist side. He really was down for the cause. He also had a problem with putting his hands on women. 
I think you can like somebody and idolize them, admire them, but it's a problem with that. I, I just have a problem with, with, and it's documented. He's been arrested several times for the violence towards women. Maybe he changed as he got older. He's 87. But there's a fine line. And I think that's what kept me from like fully embracing him because he's done some great things, a great football career. But the problem with women, it's hard. And I know some people are going to get mad, Patty White bringing that up because it's part of his life. It's part of his legacy. It's right up there with the football, the acting. That's, that's right up there as well. <sighs> I try to resist talking about Harry and Meghan. I'm sorry. I'm one of the Americans that are, that are tired of, of it's like, I want them, to, I want them to stop whining all the time and, and like do something very attractive couple, but I'm just, I'm just over, I'm just over them. And they said they were in this high speed chase in New York city. That's how his mother died. So it was troubling to hear this. But if you have ever been to New York city, that, terrible traffic. Where was the chase? You can't even get through traffic. It is so frustrating to be in New York, especially downtown, and you can't, you, where are you going? Nowhere. You're going nowhere. I remember getting out of a car and getting into one of those horse things. I was holding on for dear life during, during the whole thing, and it was extremely expensive. Um, they, they saw me coming. I had tourists written all over my face. And a lot of people poo-pooed it, including a Whoopi Goldberg. And a lot of people were like, mm, I don't think it happened quite like that. But a lot of people took offense because that is how his mother died. Well, Gail King says she's very disappointed in people who are not believing in this story. Now, Gail needs this interview. If she were to get Harry and Megan, she's going to primetime CNN with Charles Barkley every Wednesday night at 8. It would be a coup. It would be a coup for her to get this interview with Harry and Meghan. Coming out with statements like this, don't be surprised if Gail King is the one with the interview with Harry and Meghan. Country star Jimmy Allen is in a lot of trouble. You know, you saw this brother playing country music and he was the talk of the town. Then word came out that he and his wife were divorcing and she's pregnant with their third child. And it was like, how are you breaking up with your wife and she's pregnant? Because you've been out here cutting up. Jimmy Allen has issued a social media apology to his wife for being a poor example as a father and a dad. Jimmy Allen is being accused of rape by a 25-year-old worker. She says it went on for two years. He says it was a consensual relationship. This gets real muddy. Who is telling the truth in this instance? Do you believe that someone should go to social media to apologize? It is so public now. And now we all know why this marriage have, have, has busted up. He's in a lot of trouble. He don't have the protection for the complexion. He's being dropped from everything. And you won't see him gracing no stages, no time soon. Who is telling the truth in this? Rape, very serious charges. He says it was consensual. Somebody ain't telling the truth. That's what we're going to put up there. Somebody ain't telling the truth. How do you feel about a public apology? You know, I don't think that his wife is going to accept him back because she's like, I'm out. She's pregnant saying I'm out. So I don't know if that's going to help. Jay-Z and Beyonce buying the most expensive home in California, $200 million in cash. And I hear that this is just their vacation home. Singer Janelle Monet has not had an album out in five years. And she's on the cover of Rolling Stone magazine with the tatas out. She's just got her hand covering them. She says she's happiest <laughs> when her tatas are out. But she didn't use tatas. She said the other T word. She 
She says she's happiest when they are out. Last night, American Idol. They picked the new winner, an 18-year-old singer from Hawaii. A lot of people took to social media to complain. Not because he was from, you know, not because he was because he's Hawaiian. But they're saying that the show is rigged. i tell you one thing. Ever since this new incarnation of American Idol with ABC, not one person has become a superstar. Not one. Matter of fact, the young black girl who won a few years ago, Sammy something, she's back in the subways, in the subway, playing for music, and people are giving her money. They haven't made any superstars. Back when it was on Fox with Simon, you had the biggest names. Fantasia, Clay Aiken, Ruben Studdard, of course, Jennifer Hudson, Kelly Clarkson, Carrie Underwood, Justin Guarini, who's now on Broadway. They had stars come out. And it really, it really isn't the person who wins. It's that surprise person who didn't win and got kicked off. Jennifer Hudson. Boy, Simon Crow had to eat crow. This girl done gone on to become an EGOT. She's won an Emmy and a Grammy and an Oscar and a Tony. She's She didn't win American Idol, remember? He kicked her off basically because he was like he didn't like her hair. They thought she was a little too chubby. You know, she didn't she didn't have the glam together then. Fantasia won that year. But it was Jennifer Hudson is the most successful American Idol winner. Don't you don't you sleep on her. You've had Adam. It's on the tip of my tongue. He's singing now with Queen. But there have been people who haven't won, but they've gone on for great success. This ABC incarnation of American Idol ain't nobody. Ain't nobody with it. The one girl, she in the subway. I'm telling you, I'm just reading about her. So a lot of people think that the show is rigged. A lot of people are not happy with Katy Perry. I mentioned this a few weeks ago, being mean to Lionel Richie. Could a Katy Perry be replaced by Lizzo? That will be interesting. Now to go back to people think it's rigged. There was a young girl. I thought she should have won too. I thought she was going to win. And she didn't. And to say to that young girl, I couldn't pronounce her name. It's, it, was, it was different. But you can go on to be famous and not win this show. And her voice was so strong and dynamic. Cher, happy birthday, 77 years old. They say she is still pining. Her young boyfriend, who's 37, who they said he was just out here spending her money. Cher... It's nice to have friends. You have a friend. That's it. They ain't got to spend your money. Y'all can still be friends. But you ain't got to be spending no money to have no friend. Think about it. What did you guys think of the Donna Summer documentary? I'm going to have to watch it again. Because at the moment that I thought was peaceful in my house, it wasn't. Everybody came in. Everybody was talking. I was like... I got to watch it again, but the parts that I did see, it made me sad. I think because I love her so much. Um, she did not have it easy. She was one of the first artists to sue the record company and win. They robbed her of millions. The sexual abuse at, a, um, at the hands of a member of the church. Her daughter suffering abuse. Getting diagnosed with cancer when... The gay community turned against her. She became very religious and she started doing it in her shows. And she was accused of making statements that she did not make. So because she didn't confront the lie in the beginning, it spread like wildfire. And she apologized. She was crying because she says, I care about everyone. I think people could not, didn't know how to take her when her Christianity took full pledge of her life. A lot of people found it hard. Because, you know, people are like, I like you how you used to be. Well, she changed. And she found the Lord. And I think a lot of people had a hard time with that. They showed her painting career. But she wasn't really comfortable with fame. Because at the height, when it's at its biggest, that's when she was unhappy. That's when she was. 
you just feel like you're just doing shows and you're running and you're going and you're you're not happy. And I think feeling guilty as a parent for not being there for her children because she was always working. I'm going to watch it again, but I need to know what you thought of it. What did you think? Did it leave you sad? Did it see, you know, did you care? Did you really, really like it? See, when I watched the Bee Gees one, that just this had me hyped. You know, even Dina Turner, maybe because we knew so much about our life. But this one just made me a little sad. But it is streaming on HBO. So check it out. And if you have seen it, let me know what you think. Thanks so much for joining me. It's not cute not knowing. Subscribe to the channel. Leave a comment. Give us a thumbs up. I love hearing from you, even when we disagree. I know them, I know them Harry and Megan people are going to start. I said, that's why I don't bring them up. But that's just me. Everyone has a right to their opinion. But I want to hear from you. So reach out, leave a comment. It's not cute not knowing. And now you know, I'm Patty Jackson. I am your auntie of pop culture.